Some debates are simply eternal. Chocolate versus vanilla, coffee versus tea, GIF versus GIF. Actually, that one's easy. It's GIF and you're wrong if you think otherwise. A common debate in the privacy community is Android versus iOS, and as luck would have it, I recently switched from one to the other, so I thought I would try and offer some of my thoughts. Let's go ahead and play with fire in this video. Hey guys, Future Nate here, and I have a couple of updates since I recorded this video. The first one goes here, and it's that we have done a major site overhaul, visually. All the content is the same, of course, but the site actually looks modern. It looks like it's from 2023 and not 2003. I didn't include footage to announce this change when I originally filmed the video because I didn't actually have a timeline when it was going to be done. I didn't realize it was coming up so fast, but seriously, there were a couple of volunteers who did this, Rick and Jaden. They are credited on GitLab. They did an amazingly wonderful job, so please go check the website out. It should be a lot easier to share with your friends and family now because it looks more modern. It's a lot more fun, I think, to be on. And if you guys need any web work done, please contact Rick and Jaden because, again, I think they did a good job. You'll see some screenshots in the video, but be sure to give it a proper look when you have the time. The new oil is community supported. So if you want to keep videos like these coming, be sure to go support us if you're able to. If you can afford financial support, we have a merch store. We have recurring donation options like Open Collective and LibrePay. And we also accept a couple of cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Monero. Actually, we accept a lot of cryptocurrencies via the whole now payments thing. So if you want to donate in a certain currency and we don't accept it, it's probably in now payments. Go ahead and check that out. We also have a number of affiliate links where if you pay for a service or a product, we get a small kickback. So there's really a lot of ways to support us while still getting something for yourself between the merch store and the affiliate links. And of course, I fully understand that times are tough. Believe me, we have seen the price of eggs lately. If you are having a tough time financially, we still really appreciate non-financial support like commenting and liking because that helps with the algorithm. And of course, just simply sharing the content around. Every little bit helps and we are grateful for you no matter what. Thank you so much for watching. So the whole Android versus iOS debate is not unique to the privacy community, but it is especially heated there. And like I said, as luck would have it, I recently moved from one to the other and I thought that I would weigh in with some of the things that I have noticed. Now, just to be clear, this is a usability comparison. I will touch on some objective facts, but for the most part, this is just things I've noticed in terms of features, apps, functionality, stuff like that. Also, this is not going to be a comprehensive list of every single difference between the two. Again, these are just things that I have noticed that have jumped out at me over the last couple of months of having switched between them. I'm going to be clear up front. The goal of this video is not to convince you one way or another which one is better. The goal of this video is to share some of the differences that I've noticed for anybody who might be on the fence about which one is right for them. Hopefully I can help you with that. Now, let me give you a little bit of background about me so that you understand where I'm coming from with this video. Before getting into privacy, I didn't really have a brand loyalty. I actually did have the first generation iPhone when it first came out, but just because it was the first ever smartphone, I had the money to burn and I thought it was cool. When the Droid came out, it actually had some really cool features that the iPhone didn't. Like for example, early Droids had a flashlight that just turned on the flash on the back and iPhones didn't. I thought that was awesome. So once my contract was up, I switched to Droid and I kind of just did that on and off over years. Whichever phone had the apps and the features that I wanted at the price that I wanted, I would just go with that one. I really didn't have a brand loyalty. When I did finally get into privacy, I happened to be on iOS and I happened to have just purchased an iPhone. I decided then that I was going to stay with iPhone for several reasons. Number one, iPhone back then was definitely the clear winner. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a second. But number two, it was also just a being good with my money kind of thing. I had just dropped like $700 on this phone. I wasn't about to go run out and buy a new one for no reason. It was a perfectly good phone that was getting security updates, so I just decided to stick with it. That said, I recently made the move to a Pixel 6a. For those who are wondering why, there were a couple reasons. Long story short, for one, I had the ability to have two devices. Now I have a stock Android and a stock iOS that I can use for testing things for the website. Both of them are fully paid off and I actually got both of them on sale coincidentally, so Yay me and being smart with money. On a personal note, I've really become more attracted to the Android ecosystem. Again, I'll talk about more of this in a second, but I personally wanted more access to a lot of Android only apps like Briar and Shelter and things like that. Keep in mind, I was going into this totally blind, so I didn't even know if these were gonna be right for me. I just know I'd heard about them. They seemed really cool and I wanted to check them out. There's also my pine time. I've actually become really attached to this thing. Originally, I bought a three pack because my wife wanted a new fitness tracker and I thought we might be able to try something more open source. 
It ended up not working out. She didn't really like it, but I really did. And Pine Times do not work with iOS at all anymore. Okay, another quick update here. Infinilock is actually being developed again. They did find a developer and they are resuming work on the app. So this information is a little bit outdated, but that said, Infinilock is still a mere shadow of what it could be compared to something like Gadget Bridge. On Android, I am able to receive notifications. I am able to stop the music that I'm listening to or the podcast I'm listening to. I'm able to skip it to the next track, things like that. I'm also able to update my watch via the app remotely, so it's super easy. With Infinilock, I can't do any of that. Basically, all I can do is synchronize the time and make sure that it's accurate, which is great for telling time, but honestly, as far as smartwatches go, that makes it pretty useless. I can still do things like monitor my heart rate or my steps, which in my opinion are not very accurate on the Pine Time right now anyways, so it basically just makes it a glorified watch. So yeah, between all of these factors, Android seemed like a really good choice for me personally, and I wanted to try it out. Now I know the inevitable question, which is gonna be, well, why don't you flash a custom OS on your Android? You just said it was paid off and it is carrier unlocked, so technically I can do that. I have a few reasons. Number one, like I said, I wanna keep my devices stock so that I can review them. On the new oil, I cater to people who are new to this stuff, who may not necessarily have degoogled phones. So I wanna be able to give them accurate information. I wanna know firsthand if an app is not working because it just sucks on Android or if it's not working because it doesn't play well with the ROM I've chosen. So I'm gonna let you know right now up front, I'm really not gonna talk about custom OSs at all. Like I'll mention them here and there, but I'm not gonna talk about how to flash them. I'm not gonna talk about which one's better, not here. If that's what you're looking for, you're in the wrong video. Go ahead and quit now before you waste more of your time. Now that said, on a personal note, I might still do that someday. Right now, I don't have the money to afford another personal device for no reason, so I'm kind of just sticking with the two stock devices. But who knows, in the future, maybe I will decide to go ahead and put something custom on there just for my own personal daily use and then keep the other two stock devices for reviews. To some of the more extremists out there, yes, in a perfect world, I would totally encourage people who want maximum privacy to go with a de-googled operating system, especially one of the top two that allows you to lock the bootloader again on a Pixel. That said, there are a lot of perfectly legitimate reasons that people may not want to go with an Android. For example, they might've been in my shoes where they just bought an iPhone that's perfectly good and they don't have the money to go out and buy a brand new smartphone. I've also heard that there's a lot of places in the world where pixels are hard to come by. So that's a legitimate roadblock. And then, as I mentioned, my target audience is people who are new to this stuff or are not necessarily tech savvy. They may not be comfortable trying to flash a multi hundred dollar smartphone and risk breaking it. I know some of those OSs have really come a long way and they have certain installers that make that almost impossible to do, but that can still be really daunting and scary to a newcomer. So they might wanna hold off on that until they've got a little bit more experience. These are some of the reasons that I cater to stock operating systems. And I just wanna be upfront, I fully recognize that this is not a real fix. It's a mitigation. It's taking a privacy invasive system and making it a little bit less sucky. It's not perfect, it's not ideal, but I believe that everyone is owed privacy no matter what system they're on. And if there is some sort of extenuating circumstance that's holding them to that system currently, I still think that they should be able to regain a little bit of privacy by changing some of the settings. Again, I recognize that's only a mitigation, but it's better than nothing in my opinion. Okay, so let's start with the obvious question that everybody's gonna be asking, which one is better? The truthful answer is I don't think either one of them is better. Back in the day, iOS was the clear winner. All the security experts said that iOS was more secure, Apple was a more private company, and they were the obvious winner, but these days that's not the case. It's really hard to get an objective measure of these things, but we do have a few things we can look at. For example, Android zero days now cost as much as, if not more than iOS zero days, which indicates that they are either harder to find, harder to exploit, or both. Another indicator is a recent piece of research exploring who has more malware, Android or iOS. They found that Android does have more malware, but iOS tends to have more severe malware. If you think of this like a car, Android has to go to the mechanic shop more often, but they tend to be less expensive repairs. Whereas iOS, you don't have to go as often, but the repairs tend to be more expensive when you do go. At the end of the day, when you compare how much you're spending on maintenance for each car, it's probably gonna be about the same. And that's kind of the situation we're in with these phones. There is no clear winner. Privacy is pretty much the same between these two phones. Here's a fun little thing I've noticed in the privacy community. Everyone has an opinion on which big tech company is the worst. 
For me personally, I think it's Meta with Amazon as a very close second. I think they are by far the most privacy invasive and least ethical companies. Some people feel like it's Discord. Other people think that Microsoft is the root of all evil. Other people say that it's Google or Apple. If I stand up here and list off all the reasons that an iPhone is better for privacy, there will be a lot of Apple haters who will have plenty of reasons that they actually suck. And vice versa, if I sit here and tell you all the reasons that Androids are better for privacy, there will be a lot of Google haters who point out all the reasons that Android sucks. And here's the kicker, they're both right. Let's look at Apple, for example. Most experts argue that Apple is a more private company because while they may collect as much data as Google does, they don't use it to sell targeted ads. Instead, they make their money by putting a markup on their devices, which is an impressive markup, by the way. Depending on which source you go with, Apple's profit margin for an iPhone ranges from 48% to a whopping 119%. Compared to Android, on the other hand, whose profit margin ranges from 48 to 63% per pixel phone. Here's the kicker though, that's not entirely true. Apple actually does sell ads. Apple has been selling ads in the news app for years and also in the app store. And now there's even rumors that they're gonna move into Apple TV and possibly even Apple Music. Granted, selling ad space in and of itself does not necessarily mean that they're selling tracking ads, but I mean, come on, who doesn't do tracking ads nowadays? Furthermore, Apple has had several privacy scandals. For example, they used to assure people that Siri recordings are never heard by a human being, it's all automated AI stuff, and then it turned out, whoops, that's not true. There's also a lawsuit that was just initiated because recent research showed that Apple was ignoring a toggle. When you hit the toggle that says, don't track me for personalized advertising, Apple still tracked people anyways. Finally, this isn't so much a privacy thing as it is like an ethics thing, but a lot of Apple haters are quick to point out that Apple has a walled garden you don't really have any control over your phone. It's not really designed to come apart. It's very hard to fix. You don't have a whole lot of options. The software is even worse. It's literally impossible to use an iPhone without an account. You can only put on apps from the official app store. All the browsers are currently based on WebKit, etc. And for the record, again, these are all perfectly valid complaints. I mean, if you're going out there and you're dropping hundreds of dollars on a phone and then you're told that you can only do certain things with it. I mean, think about that with something else. Like if I went out and bought a sandwich at the store, even though it's only a couple bucks and they were like, hey, but you can only eat this when you're inside. Like, why would I keep buying from that store? All that said, Google is really not any better if we're gonna be totally honest. Google is not a privacy friendly company. I don't think anyone here is gonna disagree with that statement. Google is an ad company. That's been common knowledge for years. Even the services that you pay for like G Suite and YouTube Red are a drop in the bucket compared to their ad revenue. In 2021, 80% of Google's overall revenue came from ads. That is impressive. In regards to the whole toggle thing, Android is also guilty of this. Google recently settled a nationwide lawsuit in the US after it was alleged that they were still tracking user locations even when they were told not to. If you disable the location toggles, they still tracked you just like Apple did. Really, in my opinion, the biggest thing that Google has going for them in a mobile device setting is that they are a much more open ecosystem. The basic Android operating system is actually open source. It's very developer friendly. You can sideload apps directly without using an app store at all. You can use alternative app stores like Neo and a Crescent. And as I mentioned, you can even install custom OSs like Graphene or Calyx. Again, I won't be really going into depth of either of those today. Not the right video. Please find another video if that's what you're looking for. There are plenty of other resources out there for both of those operating systems, including their official websites. So go there. I'm simply pointing out that this is a possibility on Pixel phones, unlike iPhones. Okay, so with the objective stuff out of the way, what have I personally noticed in this transition? Well, let me start with the hardware. Obviously, this is going to vary based on the exact device you buy. I have an iPhone SE and a Pixel 6a. So this is gonna vary if you get like the 14 Pro Max or you know some Samsung garbage. Please don't buy Samsung, they are so bad. But generally speaking, here's what I noticed. Number one, I hated my iPhone, believe it or not. That thing literally fell off flat surfaces. I'm not making that up. My wife can confirm this. On the other hand, the Pixel is a little bit harder to reach one-handed. I work a blue collar job and it's pretty common that I have one hand full or I'm holding something and I still need to open my phone and type or swipe. And that's just kind of harder to do on the Pixel. It's just, it's a little bit bigger of a phone. It's not as one hand friendly. I also have to note that the fingerprint scanner on the Pixel sucks, seriously. On the iPhone, the fingerprint scanner basically only failed if my finger was sweaty or wet. On the Pixel, it just doesn't work half of the time. More often than not, I end up using my pin to unlock the phone than the actual fingerprint scanner because it sucks. 
I also think it's a little bit too touchy. Like if I answer the phone and I tell somebody, oh yeah, I have that information you're asking about, let me check real quick. And I pull the phone down and try to swipe, it just, it, it goes black. Like I just put my phone to my ear. It's too sensitive. I have to like come in from the side and swipe it like that. It's really weird. It's super, super sensitive. And that's really annoying because like I said, a lot of the time I'm on the phone and people say, Hey, what was that last text you got from somebody? When are you free on this date? You know, and I have to check other apps. I have to open SMS apps. I have to check my calendar, things like that. It's just really not convenient. It's way too sensitive. Finally, the speaker for regular calls, like not speaker phones, the kind you put to your ear, it really sucks. Like I can barely hear it at all, even at full volume. It sounds really faint and distant. And my wife also has a Pixel 6a. I asked her if her phone is like that too, because I thought maybe mine was defective. Nope, it's just a really crappy speaker. So basically you're either gonna have to take speaker phone calls or you're gonna have to use a Bluetooth headset because the regular calls suck. Regarding the actual operating system, iPhone objectively has one really cool feature that the Android does not, and that is text scanning via the camera. I noticed that when I was setting up my new phone for the first time and I had to go sign in, I was dreading having to type in this really long iCloud password, but it turns out I can just turn on the camera and scan it right on my computer. I open up my password manager, I choose to display the password, and then I scan it. It's a little bit finicky, it might take a minute, but it's certainly better than typing in a 25 character random password. Subjectively speaking, I did feel like the menu overall was cleaner and more intuitive and just more straightforward. I don't really know how to explain this. I've tried to show my wife, but she doesn't get it. So I guess this is a personal preference thing. I really feel like the Android menu is very circular and repeats a lot of things and you can find settings in a lot of the same places like in multiple places you can find the same settings and that just really confuses me whereas with iphone it feels very straightforward you just go down the list and just boom 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 everything's exactly where you would expect it to be uh, yeah it's just very clean and organized and i liked it a lot better iphone also has a simpler updating scheme because you basically only have two places you can update the app store and the system updates on the other hand though i do have to point out that app store automatic updates literally never worked for me Maybe it's because I didn't leave them alone long enough. I'm the kind of person that I like to check for updates at least once a day, sometimes a couple times a day if I'm just bored sitting there. And it seems like every time I check the updates, there was no like recently installed updates. It was always like updates to be installed. It never seemed to install updates when I wasn't looking. That goes for both the App Store and the system updates. Compared to Android, which has multiple places you can update, especially if you're like me and you're trying to be as open source as possible. You have to keep the Play Store updated or Aurora Store if you decide to go that way. Neo, a Crescent, APK, system updates, all this kind of stuff. And the only things I've seen personally that actually do consistent auto updates is the Play Store. Aurora has never auto updated for me. Neo does sometimes, but not all of the apps. Actually, a Crescent, which I've just started diving into recently, they did auto update. I got a notification the other day asking me if I wanted to update Molly, and I hadn't even done anything. Like my phone just pinged at me like it was a random notification. So that was pretty cool. But again, Aurora, Neo's hit or miss, and system updates don't seem to be automatic. I also don't seem to get notifications when system updates drop, but that might have been a setting I messed with. I seem to remember changing something about that recently, so that could be user error on my end. Okay, last update from the future here. It is worth noting that Android seems to be a little bit behind iPhone on updates every now and then. Now, historically, statistically, this has always been the case. iPhone users are usually more current than Android users, and part of that is because of the hardware iPhone does everything in-house. They manufacture their own hardware, they manufacture their own software, and they're very strict about what devices can load iOS. So they are able to push out updates to everyone all at once, or at very least they can control who gets the updates. Because Android's more open source, a lot of the time what Google does is they publish the Android kernel, and then it's up to the different hardware manufacturers like Samsung and LG to go ahead and take the Android kernel, modify it to work on their devices, and then push it out. So whenever the Android open source project releases an update, then everybody else who's downstream has to modify it and push it out to their devices and make sure it works. This results in a delay as everybody who's further downstream has to keep modifying the update in order to push it out. This is, from what I understand, usually the number one cause of why Android lags so far behind in iOS in terms of updates. However, without going into too much detail, that is clearly not the case right now. At the time of this recording, this update is being recorded March 19th, 2023. I still do not have the March security update for Android on my Pixel 6a. And this is particularly distressing because this is apparently an update that fixes several zero day bugs. And it was supposed to be out two weeks ago on March 6th. 
There are several other devices that have it, like older Pixel phones, like the 5, I believe, has it. There's also some Samsungs that already have this update, but for some reason, the Pixel 6a does not. And Google has not offered any explanation for what is taking so long. Now, back when I was on iPhone, it was kind of normal for me to be a day or two behind. I would read a headline that says, hey, there's a new iPhone update out, everybody go get it. And every once in a while, I would check it and my phone didn't have it, but usually it did within the next day or two. This is the first time that I've heard headlines about, hey, there's a new update, it's really important, go get it, and here I am two weeks later without it, and it's kind of stressing me out and frustrating me, so yeah, that's um, unfortunately, that's going to be a point against Android. I'm on a stock pixel. I'm as close to upstream as I can possibly get in every sense of the word, and for some reason, I'm one of the last people to get this update. It is really frustrating and disappointing, and I hope Google has a good excuse or something and i hope i get this thing soon because i never had issues like this on iphone as i said the menu feels a little bit circular to me and honestly it can be kind of overwhelming like you can literally disable play services on the android that means if somebody isn't careful and doesn't know what they're doing they could like stop getting notifications and stuff like that and not even know why it's really weird that android gives you that level of granular control I guess that's kind of a plus, but it just feels a little bit dangerous to more inexperienced users who might be trying to dive in headfirst and try to de-Google their phone as much as they can without installing a custom OS. It's kind of dangerous. Although I guess the counter argument is they can always just turn it back on, so maybe there's that. I also have to note that so far the Android menu is very buggy for me. There's a lot of times when I'll turn on my phone and I'm just stuck in the menu and I have to like pick an app to open it just to get the menu to go away so that I can close the app and go back to what I was doing. It's really weird. Although that could be a 6A bug because I know this is kind of a newer phone. I know they made some hardware changes and I haven't had that issue on any of the de-Googled Androids I've used recently. So maybe that's just me and unique to this device. I do have one last thing that I do think Android does better than iPhone and that's the cursor. On iPhone, when you wanna move the cursor around in your text message, like let's say you wanna go back and delete something before you send it, you have to hold the space bar and then like move it around where it needs to go. With Android, you can basically just tap where you wanna be, which I think is a lot more intuitive and makes a lot more sense. Okay, now let's talk about the big one, which is the apps. Android, in my opinion, puts iOS to shame here. For one, there are very few apps that are iOS only. In fact, the only one that comes to mind off the top of my head is like Rivo, the two-factor authenticator. But even then, Android's Aegis is just as good as Rivo, so you're not losing anything there. On the other hand, there are a lot of privacy apps that are Android only, like Briar, Shelter, and LibreTube. Things like these make Android a really powerful device for privacy, even if you're on stock. Like just having access to these kind of apps is a total game changer for me. Honestly, just things like Shelter and LibreTube, I don't know if I can ever go back to iOS full time. Like, holy crap, those are life changing for me. And as I mentioned before, it's the flexibility. For example, in iVPN, if I download the app from the Play Store, I don't have the anti-tracker there because, you know, Google's an ad company. Why would they want to allow an app to block some of their tracking? But I can get iVPN with the anti-tracker from Neo or Ftroid. Or in some cases, I can just sideload an APK directly, which is super awesome. If you live in an area where maybe the government is blocking the app and won't let you download it like Signal or Session, you can have somebody just send it to you and load it up automatically. Granted, the government might still be blocking the communication protocol, that's a different thing. But the point is like, that flexibility is there. That's just not possible on iOS. And you can use a Google phone without ever signing into Google. You can skip right past all the sign-in stuff. Granted, it will bug you to sign in every time you open an actual Google app, but you can still get your apps from Aurora or again, sideload APKs or use Neo or a Crescent or man, just so much flexibility. It's really awesome. That said, I do have to point out, I have noticed that some apps do work a little bit better on iOS than Android, specifically voice over IP. My pseudo, I hate to say it, is basically garbage on Android. I have to leave it running all the time in the background or else I won't get notifications. And honestly, sometimes I still don't get notifications. When I have my iPhone and my Android both sitting next to me here at home, it is not uncommon for my iPhone to go off first because of my pseudo and then a couple seconds later, my Android will. It's really not a great experience and that's very unfortunate. For the record, it should go without saying, that's not necessarily Android's fault, I don't think. That's probably my pseudo's fault and they need to do a better job but it's something you should be aware of when you're trying to pick which phone you want. I also really like the fact of knowing that I can extend the life of my phone. 
Androids generally get a lot less years of support than iPhones do. Most of them get like three years on average. The latest pixels get four or five years, but that's still not much compared to iPhones, which some of the iPhones are still getting major security updates pushed back to them. Like that's pretty impressive. So it is really nice to know that someday when my phone reaches end of life, I can go ahead and throw a custom OS on there and still have pretty good security and get updates long after they're done. I actually have a lineage phone that's currently on Android 12. The actual phone, the stock Android stopped updating on like Android 9. So again, I can really extend the lifespan of these phones. Although for the record, Lineage is not super great for security. I only did that as like an experiment to learn how to flash a phone in a low risk environment where it's like, hey, if I break this phone, who cares? It was super cheap and I don't use it. And now it's just more of an experimental little fun device. I don't actually use it as my full-time device or for anything sensitive. That said, it's worth noting that with how long iPhones get support for, there's a really good chance that I will run out of stock, custom OS and firmware updates way before I stop getting iOS updates. We'll have to see, but given Apple's track record, that doesn't sound unrealistic. So when I was reviewing my little script notes here before I started recording, I realized that I kind of made it sound, I, at least to me, I made it sound like Apple was better, but I really honestly don't feel that way. I will say that Apple feels better. It feels cleaner. It's less buggy. It's more polished. But when it comes down to the actual functionality and the working of it, Android, I think, puts in a really powerful fight. Again, there's all the customization. There's the third-party app stores, the side loading. There's the fact that there are certain interoperabilities. For example, you can use YubiKeys. You can use a Pine Time. I actually have a non-NFC solo key right here that anytime I need to sign in on my Android, I can just pop this sucker into the USB-C charging port and go. And also that, for the record, USB-C. Like, I don't have to hunt down who's got a lightning cable. There are so many USB-C cables I can use for this thing. For the record, I am aware that with the latest iOS 16.3, I'm told the NFC YubiKeys should work, but I know that that's also a recent change that Apple has started opening up its NFC chip a lot more. So I think still Android is going to offer better NFC support. If you found this video helpful, please keep us going. Again, we have a merch store. You can go ahead and get a shirt, get a hoodie, get a coffee cup or a tea cup, whatever you want to use it for. That's totally you, because unlike Apple, I don't tell you what to do with the things you buy. If there's a certain service or product that is privacy focused that you're interested in getting, we might have it in our affiliate links. Go ahead and check it out. And then of course, if you just want to give out of the kindness of your heart, we have Open Collective, we have LibrePay, we also have cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Monero, and pretty much everything else, really. And then of course, as I said, if times are tough, I totally get it. Your viewership, your comments, your liking and sharing is also very much appreciated. Thank you so much for keeping the new oil going. So in conclusion, remember, this video is not about which phone is better. I don't think that there is a better option necessarily. Phones are full of tracking and they're really hard to make private in a meaningful way. Even the best of phones are still susceptible to things like location history and carrier tracking. There's just some things you're not gonna be able to get around. That said, for most of us, phones are pretty essential. If you are in a position where you don't have to have a phone with you most of the day, you're actually pretty lucky. Most people are not like that. When it comes to stock operating systems, I really did not find a clear winner. There are things about the iPhone that I do actually miss, and I'm probably going to make my iPhone my work device, just because like I said, it handles my pseudo better and I use that a lot for work. But even if I do that, I'm probably gonna end up carrying two phones with me everywhere because my Android has the things I like better. It has those open source apps, it has shelter, it has a lot of usability that fits my personal lifestyle really, really well. Again, if I had to sum it all up, I would say the Android is more open, but iPhone is more polished. If you want something that's just gonna work, that's gonna look good and work right, no questions asked and be really user intuitive, I think iPhone is probably your best bet. But if you're looking for something that's gonna be flexible and give you the most possible freedom to reach your biggest privacy goals, I think it's Android hands down. Ultimately though, when it comes down to stock operating systems, it really depends on what you're looking for out of your device. I know a lot of people are gonna disagree, but when it comes to stock, I don't think there's a right answer. I think there's only an answer that's right for you. Just to drill the point home one last time, I do think that everyone should consider a custom operating system as they advance in their privacy journey. Maybe you're not ready for that step right now, but be sure to revisit it at some point, maybe in like a year or two years, cause hopefully you should be always growing and maybe that's not the right move for you now, but maybe it will be then. In the meantime, I hope that this video has been helpful. Good luck and thank you for watching.